Good day everyone. If you had seen my last video, uh, I was just um, showing you how to put together a uh, diode clipper selector with these rotary switches. This is actually the end result. Um, and if you didn't see that video, just briefly, uh, you can select what diodes you want. And um, there's two uh, there's two switches to choose from. So you can have a germanium with the silicon, etc., etc. And it's, it's it's for experimentation. Uh, it, it's um it's quite handy. Uh, little project, um, but in this video, um, uh, the, the the reason why I actually bought the rotary switch was to build a decade resistance box, um, which I've just finished. And in case you don't know what a decade resistance box is, it's basically a whole heap of resistors in series. And um, on each switch, like for instance, down the bottom here, if I hit that, I can do nine ohms, you know, eight ohms, seven ohms. Um, you can pretty much do whatever whatever resistance you want. Um, up to, I've done it up to um, uh, ten, 10 meg, which will be uh, 900, and, uh, sorry, 99 mega ohms. Um, and you can pretty much do whatever combination you want. So if you want, like, if you want 1500, 1500 ohms, you just hit those buttons. So it says 1500. It's, um, it's, it's that simple. So um, it's pretty, pretty easy to put together. It's a little bit of work soldering all the resistors on. Um, but it's pretty easy to put together, and instead of actually explaining how to do that, I'm just going to leave a link to the to the um, uh, web page that I followed. It's got really simple instructions on how to put one of these together, and it will do a better job you seeing the photos and, and actually ha and following the photos than me actually trying to explain it to you anyway. Um, but that was the um, purpose of um, building it. It's not the most super accurate decade resistance box you've ever gonna, you're ever going to see. Um, those accurate ones use precision resistors and, and they can cost over $500. But for a, for a hobby decade resistance box, it does a decent enough job. Um, the resistors that I've used are metal film, so they're only 1% um, uh, tolerance. Um, you're probably going to see a little bit more than 1% though, once you, once, particularly on the lower end because you start, down the lower end you start adding the resistance of um, you start to pick up the resistance of the wiring and all that sort of stuff because when you're talking about one to ten ohms, um, you, you know that stuff starts to take um, take effect. Um, and then up this end, my um, my multimeter starts to get a little bit inaccurate around. Uh, I think it's sort of around five meg maybe, or I'm not sure if it's my my multimeter or the resistors um, that are start starting to get inaccurate. Um, uh, it could be a bit of both, but either way, it really doesn't matter because once you once you start getting into that um, range, it, it doesn't matter whether it's a, whether it's that accurate or not. And in fact, with most of the guitar pedal stuff, um, you, it's not going to matter too much if you're if you're a bit out. Um, uh, you know, they're not they're not super accurate these sort of analog uh, audio circuits. So the point of building it was just for experimentation purposes. Obviously, if you've got a socket where you've got a resistor and you want to uh, play around with the value. Um, you can just pull it out, and you can just plug in whatever whatever resistance value you, you want with this thing. Um, you can use a potentiometer, of course. This will tell you exactly what um, what resistance value sounds good, but you don't have the freedom to turn with a potentiometer. Of course, it's quicker if you're just you know turning a potentiometer back and forwards. Um, but yeah, you won't have to measure the potentiometer once you once you unplug it. It'll it says on the front what you've um, you know what you've set it to. So it's pretty good in that respect. So I'm just going to um, plug my multimeter in. We'll just have a look at what some of the values and how accurate it is, and you know how it works. And I'll just mess around with the buttons and show you, and show you it in action. So just a shot of the inside. You can see each switch has got all these resistors. So if you start with the one ohm resistors, you know it's just nine one ohm resistors on the switch in series. And as you obviously, as you press the button and the counter goes up, it adds an extra one ohm resistor. And then when you go to the next one, it adds whatever you've got on this, which is 10, 100, 1K, 10K, 100K, 1 meg, 10 meg. Um, and that's how the counter works, basically. Um, so it's a pretty straightforward concept, and um, uh, it's not that complicated to put together. In fact, if you follow the instructions on the, um, on the link I'm going to leave in, this, this, in the description, um, it's really simple to put together. 
One thing I forgot to mention, actually, I was going to use banana plugs, which are a much better option than these um, speaker jacks, but um, uh, speaker terminals. But the uh, Tadar didn't have them when I was ordering them, and uh, my, I actually went to my local electronics shop, and they were just ridiculously expensive. They're like three dollars each for the for the um, females, and then another three dollars each for the males. It's like twelve bucks just for connectors. I just thought bugger it. I'll just use these um, speaker terminals. Uh, this speaker terminal, which is only about forty cents. And then obviously I just put a piece of wire with a pin on the end and you know plug them into the sockets so that'll work out fine. <clears throat> and of course you can just plug the um, the probes straight in um, for this particular test. They can just go in sort of a bit like sort of banana plugs in that respect. And I'll just get them both. I'll just get the re um, resistance box and the multimeter in shot so you can see both. Okay, so hopefully you can see them both clearly. Um, so as you can see already, I haven't set anything on it. They're all on zero, um, and I'm getting 0.7 ohms. Um, so that's probably just the resistance in the um, in the probes, and also um, just the resistance in the in the wiring inside the um, inside the decade box. So you can just relative that out, obviously. So it's zero now, and then um, if we hit, so we want one ohm, one ohm. It's approximate. Sometimes you get, you know, point. You know, you might get 3.1 or 4.1 or whatever. Four ohms, 5.1 approximately, 6.1, 7, 8, 9, and then back to zero. Um, so yeah, 10 ohms, 20, 30, 40, 40 point one, 50. If you, want, if you want 65 ohms, let's for instance, let's whack that on. 65.2. Um, let's chuck 100 on it. 165, 265, 365, 300. We've we'll, we'll almost got 366 there. It's pretty. It's pretty close for 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 a hobby decade box. It's pretty. It's pretty close. Forgot to mention actually at the beginning. Um, these switches only cost about five bucks. I, I mentioned it in the last video about the um about the diode clipper. But yeah, you can get you can get them from um, eBay and um. And they work as they should. They're not the highest quality that you're going to get. You know, it's Chinese stuff. But um, you know, as you can see, they do the, they do the job. Uh, hopefully, the mechanisms will last a, a decent amount of time. So yeah, let's crank that up. Let's say 865. It's gone over limit because I'm on relative. I'll just change the change the range. So 865, 862, 868, 865. So as you can see, it's approximate 860. 1,860, 11,860, just change the range there. Um, let's go, let's go, no, that's, tw that's 12K, 13K, um, 13,500. So, yeah, just, just giving you an idea, you know, of, of what you get, what you get out of it. Um, so this will be 110, 100 and 110k, but about 1.1 meg. Uh, one, it's actually 1.11 meg, and then obviously at the highest end you've got the um, 10 megs. So, um, so I just noticed there was a problem with this last switch here, and I had a look inside, and there was a little lead leg that I didn't um, clip off properly, and it, it, uh, it left a bit of length on it, and it folded over and made a short, and so yeah, it wasn't having an effect, um, but now it's now it's fine. So the 10 meg um, range is a little inaccurate. I don't know if it's the mult, the the meter, the resistors, both. It's probably both contributing to it. Um, but like I said before, it doesn't really make much difference. Once you get once you get over one meg, you know, it's it doesn't need to be doesn't even need to be that accurate um, for most hobby electronics and you know specifically for guitar pedals. You, it just doesn't make any difference. So that's 10 meg, 20 meg. 30 meg, and in fact, it goes up to 90 meg, and my um, <laughs> my multimeter actually might go up that high. I think it stops at about, I think this, I think it stops at 80, 80 meg, which is the end of its count. 70 meg, and then um, that's 80 meg, and there there it goes. So that's it for the decade resistance box. I'll leave a link to the project, uh, the the project that the guys come up with, the instructions, and you can um, you can go and check it out and build one yourself. Probably cost me about. 
maybe ten or twelve dollars to put together. I think the box was about five. The switches were about five, and um, you know a bunch of resistors that didn't really cost that much, about thirty cents. Um, so it was pretty cheap to put together and a pretty handy little um, little box to have around. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more more electronics and guitar pedal related um, videos. Thanks for watching.